Super Mario 3D World is one of the best games on the Wii U and soon to be one of, if not, the best game on the Nintendo Switch. I am absolutely obsessed with this game and I know a lot of you guys are as well. However, if you take a look at the sales for 3D World, it only sold 5.86 million copies, which, you know, to be fair, that's still 5.86 million. That's a fair amount. But considering the Wii U didn't sell that well to begin with, it kind of makes sense that, you know, it's almost sold uh, less than half of New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, which is, you know, not the best look for 3D World. However, when it comes to the Switch, I know it's going to sell amazingly well. It's going to surpass the Wii U version nearly instantly in sales, I think. And because of that, a lot of new people who have never played the game before are going to be picking it up for the first time. So a couple of 3D World uh, fanatics, if you will, me and Zach from Switch Farce are going to be going over some of the best, like, beginner's tips, I guess, for Super Mario 3D World. I'm so jealous of the people that get to play this for the first time. Like, they are in, <laughs> they don't even know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah, I mean, it is one of, if not the best Mario games ever. I mean, Zach is as big of a fan of this game as I am, so if you want to see more 3D World content, make sure to check out his channel, Switch Force. It'll be linked in the description, and with that out of the way, Zach, let's talk about some of these, these really, really interesting beginner's tips that might help people out get a head start when this game eventually comes out. The first tip that we want to share with you is about the game auto-saving. So before in 3D World, the OG version on Wii U, it would bring up a little uh, loading slash saving screen after every level. Now they have removed that screen for convenience, but do not fear, after every level the game is saving, it's just doing it in the background to, to save you a little bit of time. Yeah, I mean, I loved that little like loading saving screen because you got to see this little cute little 8-bit Mario, but I mean, now <laughs> that that's just gone, you know, perfectly fine because it's just, you know, for convenience sake, now you don't have to wait after beating every level. But as Zach said, do not fret because the game is still saving. And if you are playing online multiplayer, it is only saving to the like host of the online room, the person who originally yes. loaded up their profile. So, you know, make sure you guys remember that if you're, you know, playing with your friend and then you go back to your profile and you're wondering why your progress is not there, that is why. All right, moving right along, one-ups in this game are handled a little bit differently than pretty much any other Mario game we have on Switch. So if you're a new, you know, Switch fan, you haven't played that much Nintendo in the past, this might be a bit confusing. So let's kind of break it down for you right now. So in Odyssey, there are no lives. You know, you just lose coins whenever you die. That's, you know, normally not how it works in Mario, but I personally like how that works, so more power to Odyssey. And then if you take a look at New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, when you're playing multiplayer in that game, each character has their own lives. For example, if, you know, Luigi has five lives left, Luigi can die five times, and then he is out and needs, you know, a one-upper to use a continue. However, in 3D World, that is not how it works at all. In 3D World, everyone who is playing has a shared pool of lives, and that's, you know, definitely important to know because if you check up and see you have three lives and then you don't die, but now you have zero lives because your friends have died a couple of times, that could definitely be a bit confusing if you didn't understand that was how that worked. This is very helpful, but also could lead to some couch brawls, I'm sure. But I, I really like that this is just, it's, it's the best of all worlds. It has the single player, it has the multiplayer, and allowing you to share the lives can help you carry along maybe some players that aren't as as great but then at the same time the competitive element if your friend is the guy constantly dying thomas if you were playing toad and just missing those jumps i would not be missing those jumps oh very true very true all right yeah there's also a way to just get more lives so if you find this this life thing being an issue um in both world 1-2 and world 5-1 there are infinite live tricks infinite one-up tricks and i believe thomas they top off at 1110 uh, but that, that should give you enough to get through even the toughest 3D world levels. Yeah, 100%. They do top off at that weird number uh, because it tops off at technically like crown, crown, crown. They just introduce another digit. Mario just, you know, says goodbye to the base 10 system that we all know and love for numbers <laughs> and introduces, you know, crowns. It makes it very confusing. But you do get 1,110 total lives using those one-up tricks. So yeah, if you are playing with people who are a bit new to 3D Mario or just new to gaming in general, this game is a great way to, you know, break them in and, and kind of teach them how to play. But obviously it will, uh, it, it will take a toll on your lives counter. So definitely use one of those tricks if you find yourself game overing too much. Um, yeah, it's just a super useful trick to use there. And speaking of 1-2, which is where, you know, the first infinite one-up trick is found, you can actually skip the entirety of World 1 by finding a secret exit pipe there, and same thing with skipping World 4 in level 4-2. Yeah, that's very nice, and a nice callback to old-school Mario, um, and it just helps you really 
feel out the variety of this game. One of my favorite parts of 3D World is how the level by level, world by world, there's just so much coming at you. So many different themes and different environments and even different styles of levels, from shadow play levels to more expansive levels to more direct levels to a Mario Kart level. So if you are getting a little bored with, uh, you know, World 1 and you need to zoom ahead, definitely take advantage of those secret pipes. This next trick is one of my favorites because I feel like it goes completely under the radar, which is the synchro ground pound. It's a synchronized ground pound where if you and your cooperative friends both butt stomp at the same time, it wipes out many more enemies than a single ground pound would. It unleashes a shockwave, and this can be a very useful way to get out of a sticky situation. I will note, though, that if you ground pound at different times, it's possible to stun your friend, so I guess that could be a very awesome antagonistic move, but probably want to watch out in case your friend uh, isn't up to, to speed and gets stunned and stuck in a very unfortunate life-losing situation. Obviously, as Zach said, uh, that could be a very antagonistic thing to do. You don't want to do that on purpose unless you do, because you can actually steal the crown that your friend has with a ground pound. And this is our next tip. The crown is just an absolutely incredible addition to this game because it makes it so fun when you're playing multiplayer. It turns a cooperative game into a semi-competitive game. It's like half cooperative, half competitive. It's the sort of mix that we don't really see ever because it's really hard to get that balancing act working, but 3D World just nails it like flawlessly. It's super fun. And so when you're trying to steal that crown from people, because you know, remember when you jump on the flagpole with the crown, you get an extra, I believe 5,000 points to get the crown again, essentially. So you want to end the game with the crown. You want to finish every level, jump on every flagpole with that crown on your head, and you can steal it from enemies by ground pounding them, and then they get stunned, they lose the crown, you can pick it up and run to the flagpole. Yes, I love this element. One of my favorite Switch games is Overcooked 2, and it has that similar sauce where you're trying to work together because you want to both beat it, but at the same time, like, you want to do better. You want to make sure that you are top of the flagpole. And speaking of top of the flagpole, get the top of the flagpole. This is an incentive to make sure you are first to finish because the top top gives you the most points by far. And if you're trying to get the crown, you want that high score. And this is the best way to ensure that you will either take or keep that crown. Obviously the top of the flag look gets you, you know, normally it'll get you a one up. I thought it would get you one ups in this game too, but it actually gives you a lot more points, which honestly I find way more valuable when you're playing in multiplayer because sometimes all you want is just to just beat your friends on that final screen and the top of the flagpole is definitely the best way to do that. On top of that, you're going to have to get the top of the flagpole on every single level if you want to get that 100%, you know, get all the stamps, get to World Crown, all that fun stuff. So yeah, I mean, just try and always go for the top of the flagpole. There's no reason not to. Next thing we have is not all power-ups are created equal. As unfortunate as it sounds, there are some power-ups that are just, quite frankly, not as good as others. One of those is the Fire Flower. I think the Fire Flower is an iconic Mario power-up. It's probably the most iconic besides maybe the star and the, uh, the mushroom, but honestly, in this game, it's not the best. Um, you definitely want to try and always have either a Tanuki or a cat suit in your power up reserve because those are by far two of the best power ups. Let's not forget the, the double cherry. That's one of my favorite power ups in the entire history of Mario. It just creates so many fun and quirky scenarios, especially in multiplayer, but you're absolutely right. Make sure that you save a power up. You're able to kind of cycle through them uh, if you need to use cat suit here and then want to swap to Tanuki suit there. And I'm interested to see how this whole power up reserve works out in Bowser's Fury because if you've paid attention to any of the screenshots, you're able to save even more power-ups in that additional mode. Speaking of additional modes, the characters aren't all created equal here, and at times it can feel like a different mode playing with a different guy or gal. We've got Peach, Luigi, Mario, and Toad, and I feel like the game kind of is ranked in that way from easiest to hardest. You've got Peach who will help you flutter to safety, Luigi with his big jump, Mario with his traditional controls, and Toad who's speedy, but he... <laughs> His height is kind of a limiting factor. Yeah, Toad's jumps are, I, I guess he kind of takes after Captain Toad in a sense, because Captain Toad, you know, does not jump. And while Blue Toad technically does, I mean, he might as well not sometimes. Like, it, it's just not not a very effective jump, um, especially when you compare it to someone like Luigi. However, Toad is a lot faster, so he is generally the hardest to play character. But if you're trying to get to the flagpole first, get to that golden, you know, top of the flagpole, get the most points. And obviously, if you get to the flagpole far before all your friends, they won't even get a chance to get to the flagpole. They won't get any points. So if you're trying to beat your friends, maybe you could go Toad and just, you know, try and grind out that speed. But also, the general speed for all characters has been increased in 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. So I guess we kind of got to do some testing to see if Toad is still viable in that sense. But yeah, the definite easiest character is, you know, Peach with her flutter jump. 
Luigi, he's just got a higher jump, which, you know, is just useful all around. Mario is an all-around good character. And Toad, well, he's super fast, but that's about all he has going for him. I'm so eager to see the rankings for the Captain Toad level since those are getting multiplayer as well. And, and that's going to be really intriguing to see which Toad takes the cake. Uh, plus, there might be an extra character that you'll have to figure out and find out as you progress through all of 3D World. All right, so our last point here is really important because it'll allow you to kind of enjoy the game more because you won't need to be stressing about all those collectibles. Our last point is literally just that. Do not stress about getting every single green star or stamp on your first playthrough. If you're anything like me, you're a completionist. You, you are very much so, you know, dedicated to finding everything on your first playthrough. I remember when I was, you know, playing through the original Uncharted, kind of a weird, you know, segue there, but I was trying to get all the little medallions. I was trying to get everything. I was going through every corner. And then I just realized I wasn't having as much fun as I would be if I was just playing through the game, you know, progressing at my own pace and just having fun. So that's our tip for you because there's no reason to try and get every stamp and star because you're going to have to replay every level anyway because you need to get the golden flagpole, you need to get, you know, every character there. And as Zach alluded to, there might be an extra character. So even if you're playing with, you know, your four stack, you're playing with four characters all at once, you will have to play through every level again. So there's no reason to kind of stress. You don't need to get a golden flagpole every time. You don't need to get a stamp, all the stamps or all the stars every time. Uh, just play through the game, have some fun and worry about the, you know, 100% grind later. Yeah, there's no need to worry. The stages are so fun. You're going to want to go back and play them again. So it's actually to your benefit to play through these multiple times. You'll probably find new little secrets or new little hidden nods uh, throughout as you progress. And it, it's one of the games that I feel is so worthwhile to 100%. I am not much of a completionist, but I did 100% 3D World because I feel like it's it's so worth it. Like those stars are in such clever locations. The stamps are so fun to find. And once you do maybe potentially unlock, maybe an, potentially an extra character, it just makes the game that much more enjoyable. A hundred percent. And it comes back to, you know, something we've talked about many times in this video on this channel and just in, you know, past collabs we've done, Zach, is that 3D World you know, obviously it's a 3D Mario game first and foremost, but it honestly kind of feels like a party game at the end of the day. When you're playing with, you know, a group of people, you're having fun, you're going through the levels, you know, you don't have to be that good at the game in order to play it with your friends and have fun. And because of that, it feels like a party game. And, you know, party games, you don't really play them to complete them. You play them to just go again and again and again. And that's kind of what you get with 3D World. So there's no need to, you know, play through everything. Get all the stamps on your first time. Get all the green stars on your first time. Because chances are you're going to be replaying this game over and over again. And those collectibles will come. So just make sure you're having fun on your first playthrough. So what you're saying is that this is the real Super Mario Party. Ah, uh, well, Super Mario Party... We, we don't talk about that here, Zach. That, oh, that game God, might as well bad. not Goodness exist. <laughs> so sorry. All right. So thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. On top of that, if you haven't already, make sure to check out Zach's channel, Switch for us. He does, you know, a lot of Super Mario 3D World videos. And I'm assuming if you're watching this video and subscribe to this channel, you're, you might be a little bit of a fan of 3D World. So make sure to check out Zach's channel as well. And uh, with that out of the way, Zach, are, are we done here? I mean, hey, it's it's one of the best games, maybe the best game, and I agree. I think this is gonna sell like crazy, and I'm just so excited to play it. So it's finally here, Thomas, after all this time. After all this time, indeed. Many years of asking and begging. It's looking to be here, and it's looking to be better than we could have even anticipated with that brand new Bowser's Fury mode we didn't even talk about in this video. Crazy stuff going on there, but yeah. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I'm Thomas from the Switch Stop, joined by Zach, signing off. Peace.